What's up, everyone? Welcome to the next episode of the PR Fit Podcast. Thank you guys for joining me. As always, my name is Ricky Perez. I am the owner and founder of PR Fitness Training. We have one of the fastest growing online fitness companies, and everything I make, including this podcast, is designed to help you start working smarter and not harder in fitness. It's a big, big problem that I see being you know, a, a personal trainer for all these years. There's a lot of people working harder and not smarter in fitness. It is a very miserable place to be. I've been there myself in the past, and it's all about figuring out what you need to do to get closer to your goal, what you need to do to start working smarter and not harder so you can actually see results and actually get closer to how you want to look, how you want to feel, whatever it might be for your specific goal. So again, thank you guys for joining me. I have a great episode for you guys today. I'm going to be getting real deep on some on some stuff. Okay, The first thing I want to kind of discuss is the norm of like the of society and i also want to discuss you know because i get a lot of questions ricky what is you know what's your goal long term for pr fitness training what do you want pr fitness training to be let me outline you know i'm gonna go over what i envision my company being you know and hopefully you know becoming here in the next three four five years um which i think is gonna be something very special if you know keeps everything starts or everything keeps going according to plan so Let's go over that. Let's start with society as a whole first, okay? And I'm, you know, I might be being a big baby on this, and if I am, and if you disagree, feel free to comment below. It's gonna be on YouTube. This is gonna be on Spotify. It's gonna be on clips of this. Is gonna be on my Instagram. So feel free to comment. But I just feel that overall, as a society, I'm just very disappointed in in where we are from like a health and fitness standpoint, okay? And the reason I say that is when I think about what is considered normal, I think about drinking, I think about crumble cookies, I think about you know going to happy hour, I think about all of these events that we consider to be normal that we do way too frequently, okay? And I'm, I'm not going to be anti, this is not an anti-fun, anti-drinking episode or anything like that, but there's just a lot of things that we do on a daily and weekly basis that are very counterproductive to our health that we now just consider to be normal, okay? And I think that is a big, big problem, um, at, you know, society as a whole deeming these certain events as normal, which, you know, I'm gonna touch on here in a second, I feel like are very not normal. So the question I wanna ask you, and I want you to think about this, and I want you to reach out to me and comment on this if you if you disagree, or if you have like a good thought on this, because I've been thinking about it a lot lately. But the statement I wanna make is, or the question I have is, Is there ever been a time where it was cool or it was uh, it was normal to be proactive and care about your nutrition, care about your fitness? Um, Has there ever been a time where like that was the norm? Okay, and what I mean by that is, I mean, I mean like that is like what most people did. Okay, because if there was a time. I don't believe I've lived through it, okay? Like, I don't think it was in the past 30 years because for as long as I can remember and certainly for as long as I have been in the fitness industry, um, it's never been common. It's never been, and maybe I just live in the wrong part of the world. I don't know, but it's never been the normal thing to do to go out of your way to constantly try to better your health, Okay. It's always been the outliner. It's always been like the weird thing. And the funny thing about like us as a society is I feel like we put these beautiful people, quote unquote, beautiful people on pedestals, whether it's like, you know, a very attractive female, a very attractive male, whatever, like, you know, insanely fit human being. Okay. I'm just going to leave it at that. We put these people on these high pedestals and we're like, oh man, this person is like, they look so great. I wish I looked like them. Yet at the same time, the activities and what takes for you to get to that to that point, and not even to that point, okay, just like a fraction of that point, the activities that you need to do to be healthier, they're just always poo pooed upon, okay. It's always like, oh, what diet are you doing now? Oh, is this fit in your diet? Oh, uh, you know, you work out five days a week. That's weird. You're like a you're a, you're a gym rat, aren't you? It's like, what, what like. That has always been the response, like as for as long as I can remember. And it's something that obviously doesn't bother me. I could care less what other people think. But like it just blows my mind that that 
and you know, I think I've said this in the previous podcast episode, but like it blows my mind that consuming alcohol five days a week is more normal than working out five days a week. Okay. And I think if you really think about it, okay, either think about yourself, think about the people around you, I think you'll come to the conclusion where that is is probably correct. Okay. More people you know probably consume alcohol five days a week than work out any form of exercise five days a week. Okay. And I just think that's like the sad reality we have somehow got to um, as a society. And, you know, I think like when I, I just think about like, you know, because all I have to pull from is like my, my experiences. So like when I think about working with people that are newer to fitness, you know, someone that hasn't worked out a whole bunch in the past, I think the, the thought of working out five days per week is like absolutely insane. Like the thought is like, no, like I'm, what am I, a professional athlete? Like I don't want you to work out five days a week. And I think that's kind of like, again, it depends on what you're doing for workouts, but I don't think that is like, that should be considered more normal than what it is. Even if you're just going on like a walk five days a week, like, you know, I just think, just think about like most people do not exercise even three days a week. Okay. Most people I would argue probably don't even exercise at all. Okay. So it's like, my question is like to kind of tie this back is like, when did we get here? Like when did, when did exercising become such a foreign language? Like, you know, it's just been so, our, our default right now is this. Our default is we don't lift weights. Forget about lifting weights. We don't work out. Okay. Most people don't work out. And then the default is we consume alcohol on a daily basis, whether it's at night or whatever. And like what we think, you know, good gestures to other people like, oh, it's your birthday. Here's a bottle of wine. Oh, it's your birthday. Here's crumble cookies. It's like everything we've designed our society around is all counterproductive to us being healthier. You know, it's like, okay, fast food, uh, crumble cookies, uh, it's your birthday here. I'm going to send you this. It's like, you know, nothing we're sending people is moving people forward is basically what I'm saying. Like, like that's, we're just not about that. Like I got, that's like totally foreign. Um, and again, I'm not, you know, I'm not anti cookies. I'm not anti alcohol. I'm just like anti making that the, the default. Okay. Like that just does not need to be the default. The default gift does not need to be, you know, I'm sending you some pizza or cookies or, or wine or whatever. Um, but again, you know, you probably, most people probably disagree with that. Most people would probably say, oh, that's just, you know, it's, it's fine on special occasions. The argument I would have with you is, it is fine on special occasions, but apparently every single day is a special occasion. Like, you know, this is just everybody's norm now. So like, you know, it's one thing if it's on special occasions, it's another thing it's, you know, if it's an everyday thing. And the point I want to make with this is this is something I talk to, you know, my clients a lot with, especially in our, in our group. And that is, and that is what we define as a norm. Okay. And what I want to get across to people is like, listen, our norm, if you want to be normal, Okay, if you want to be normal, if you want to look and feel like everybody else, then by all means you can be normal. Okay, but if you want to be above average, if you if you're not, if that normal is not what you want to be, which you know for most people, well, for all people that I work with, that's not the normal that they want to be. We're going to have to do things differently, things that most people consider to be weird, that we would probably consider to be normal. Okay. Lifting weights five days a week. Oh, what are you, a gym rat? No, I'm just trying to be healthy and like build some muscle mass so I have a, you know, advantageous body composition to look good and feel good. Okay. Like, I feel like that's pretty normal. Okay. A lot of people would be like, oh, you're crazy. Like, are you trying to train for a bodybuilding competition? Again, no. I'm just, I just value my health more than most people do. Um, so basically, and like, you know, what I try to get across to my clients is like, let's redefine what normal is because. What normal is to most people should not be our normal, okay? And if we want to be normal, if we want to look like everybody else, then that's fine and we can continue to eat fast food every day and go out to eat every day and drink alcohol every day. But if you want more than that, then those, you know, we're actually going to have to cut back on those things and work smarter and not harder, okay? Um, that's kind of what I want to touch, you know, touch on. The main thing is like I just feel like we're just so far away from what is considered normal, um, like the new normal is just so insanely not normal in my opinion. Um, and I just hope like as a society, like, you know, sometime in the future moving forward, which I see glimpses of it here and there, that we transition away from that 
and kind of transition into like, oh, hey, it's cool to lift weights five days a week. Oh, it's it doesn't even have to be cool, but basically like it it can't be weird. Like it can't be considered weird or like insanely overachieving. Like, hey, you're trying to go to the Olympics because you work out five days a week. Like, no, that's like, let's try to make that the new normal. Like caring about your health, caring about what you put in your body, that should not be frowned upon. It should be, it should be like, you know, praise. It should be like the new standard. Um, you know, obviously that's how I feel being a fitness professional, but I hope we do get that. Now I do see, um, at least from like a food perspective, there's this whole thing. Uh, was it better for you? BFY, you know, basically like the Celsius's of the world, the Olipops, the, you know, basically better for you options that I think are very valuable tools. Some of them are healthy. Some of them, I wouldn't necessarily say they're healthy, but they're just a better for you option than drinking a beer. Um, and like, I hope, you know, these are starting to get a little bit more popular and, you know, my hope is like, okay, people kind of, the default gets away from like, oh, Hey, I'm going to drink alcohol every single night to like, oh, I'm going to have one of these better for you options where it's like, you know, is it the healthiest thing? Is it water? No, it's not water, but it's not beer. Okay. So like it's somewhere in between, but it's a healthier for you option. So my hope is we kind of start transitioning away and we start to realize that like, Hey, drinking every single day going out to eat every single day is not normal. Okay. And we transition away from that and kind of get pushing in the other direction more or less. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to, you know, touch on as far as from a society norm standard. Um, the next thing I want to touch on is, you know, basically the future of, you know, PR fitness training. And, you know, people ask me like, Hey, what are you up to now? Like, I know you guys had, had an app. Now you do your online stuff and you, you do you still have, imp- you know, people in person. Um, basically, yes. And this, this is what I want to, this is what I want to touch on as far as like the future of PR fitness training. Um, you know, my goal and my like vision of, of PR moving forward is for it to, you know, eventually become a, I don't want to say one-stop shop because I hate, I kind of hate that term, but basically if you're someone that, you know, knows you need to start taking control of your health and you want to, you know, learn every, learn all the essentials that you need to get yourself on the right track and start seeing results. Like I want PR to be known as that, as that source more or less. Okay. Now the reason why I don't want to like classify it as a one-stop shop is I think one-stop shops in general, and let me like harp on this for a second. One-stop shops in general, I feel like in most businesses are just very shitty products. And what I mean by that is like the one-stop shop, you know, this is a, this is a common gym thing. So like gyms try to play off this. And let me say the gym, the, the gym model that we know today, I think is very broken and it's broken from both a business standpoint and a consumer standpoint. And why I say that is when you're a one-stop shop for, let's just call it fitness and nutrition and cl- classes, like that tells me that you're just not good at anything, okay? And that's not what I'm trying to get at here. And that's not what I'm trying to classify PR as. Um, an example that is like, oh, hey, come pay 150 a month for our gym because we're the one-stop shop for everything. We have, you know, workout equipment, we have classes, and we have, like, what's another thing? Um uh, personal trainers. Okay. So what that tells me is, okay, you guys do, you you guys do workouts, you do classes and you have personal trainers. So you're really not good at anything. Okay. That's basically what it, what that tells me. Okay. If I wanted to do classes, I would go to orange theory or something that is literally just specializes in classes and they're going to have a better, you know, they're going to be, they're going to do the class scene much better. Why? Cause it's the only thing they do. That's what they specialize in. Okay. If I want a personal trainer, I'm going to go either see somebody privately that owns their own business that just specializes in personal training or somebody um, at a where they just do personal training. You know, why? Because that's what they specialize in. Um, you know, you know, and if I want to just work out at a gym, I just want somewhere to go to like lift weights. I'm probably going to go to, you know, the whatever down the down the street that, you know, that's how that's honestly like an easy one. Like the fact that people pay like 190 just to like go lift weights, like you know, you can find a like ma and pa gym that's paying like fifty dollars a membership and that has like an insane amount of, of of equipment, like everything you need. So what I'm trying to say is let's bring this back. 
I don't want it to be known as a one-stop shop because I feel like one-stop shops are kind of are, are very bad products. What I mean by that is what I want it to be is it's somewhere you go where you just learn all the essentials and this is what I'm working on right now and this is what I you know preach to my clients is like you go and it's one thing to have everything that you need. It's another thing to make all of those a priority and teach you how to successfully navigate all these okay and in how I, you know let me try to break that down for you like you know in order to better your health you're going to need to follow some type of training program okay and on top of that you're going to need a nutrition protocol to get there okay and then you're going to need some form of accountability now let's think about the gym scene again there you know you get no I don't know any gyms and you know, there probably are some, I don't know any gyms that give you any type of nutritional help. Okay. And nutritional help is not like, Oh, here's the like PDF. Nutritional help is like, okay, Hey, we're going to break down the exact calories and macros that you need to get to your goal. Okay. When you don't have that aspect, you're working harder and not smarter. Okay. And that's why people go to gyms and they take hit classes five days a week and nothing happens because they don't have any help with the, the nutritional side of it. Okay. So they just spin their tires, spin their tires, spin their tires. So, So that's like a big problem I see. So it's like, you know, what I want PR to be known for is like, okay, you know, I want to, I'm serious about changing my health. I come in here, they're going to give me exactly what I need from a training standpoint to get to my goal. On top of that, they're going to give me exactly what I need personally from a nutrition standpoint to get to my goal. And then obviously I'm going to be held accountable. And when you can lock those three things, three things in, you just add, you know, some kids, you basically just add time to that. Okay. Once you have those tools, you just times that by time, you know, times that by like six weeks and being held accountable, then you're going to get results. Okay. And that's what I want. Like the thought of that, I think is so foreign to most people. And every time I talk to somebody, you know, like a potential client and I explain that they're like, that literally makes so much sense. Um, and I'm like, I know. And you know, it, it, it does, but nobody, one, people are not aware that's like, that, that's even an option. They think fitness is just a guessing game of like, Oh, somebody's fit because they just do random crap in the gym and they eat healthy. And it's like, okay, well, what do they actually do in the gym and what is their goal? And what do they, what does eating healthy mean? Because eating healthy doesn't mean anything. Like who, nobody knows what eating healthy means. Like the only thing we care about, and I tell this in my class too, the only thing that we're, we don't care about eating healthy. We care about eating for our goals. Okay. What are our calories? What are our macros? That's what we need to hit at the end of the day. Okay. End of story. Okay. So you know, I hope as, you know, bring this full circle, I hope as society as a whole, like shifts away from this, like, hey, let's drink every day to, hey, let's like, you know, let's do things that are better for our health, that people start to realize and, you know, start to see that like, oh, hey, fitness isn't a guessing game. And a lot of things I know, the gym model, the the uh, Orange Theory model, the like all these models, they're all selling you one piece of the of the pie okay and then like my hope is that you start to see like oh okay you know pr fitness and other companies like that they're selling you the entire pie okay they're giving you all the tools that you need to be successful you just need to you know one take action and invest your time and effort into learning how to use them and then once you know how to use them then it's a very valuable skill moving forward okay because a lot of the things that i teach and a lot of the very simple, basic things that make people successful in that, you know, that come through the program are things that they're just like, wait, I had no idea. Like it was literally this, this simple, like, how is it taking me this many years to know this? And I'm just like, well, half of the things people don't want you to actually know, because if you knew that you needed a nutrition aspect, you probably wouldn't, you know, stay training at a gym. Um, but two, you know, sometimes people just aren't very good at the whole fitness thing and they don't know that they're missing components. So moral story is, you know, PR fitness moving forward, I hope it becomes not a one-stop shop, but a very specialized, hey, I need to get my shit together. I basically like, like a university more or less of like, hey, I'm going to come in. I'm going to know exactly what I need to do. I'm going to invest my time and effort. I'm going to learn. And then these skills that I learn are going to set me up for, one, they're going to get me results. But two, I now am in full control of my health. I know exactly what I need to do in the gym. I know exactly what I need to do from a nutrition standpoint to look exactly how I want. Okay. That's basically my goal for PR fitness training. You know, that's what, you know, that's how I've been operating over the past, you know, three years. 
And, you know, are, you know, have we been perfect? No, but I think it's just a learning curve of like being more efficient. And the more time goes by, the more information, um, the more, basically the more stuff I like, the more efficient I get at like teaching people how to successfully navigate the fitness, because it is very easy. Um, it is very easy. It is very black and white. The hard things are, navigating the day-to-day like you know the hard honestly the hard thing is the societal distractions okay when you go to work and you got crumble cookies at work and it's the cool thing to you know get a drink at lunch and then get a drink after work like that's what makes it hard okay because that is not normal that's most people's normal so um i hope i did okay job of explaining all that if you have any questions you know just comment them down below Um, I appreciate if you share this episode, if you send it to a friend, whatever, if you reach out to me and say, Hey Ricky, I listened to it. You know, that means a lot because I have no idea who listens, who doesn't. Um, but thank you guys for tuning into this podcast episode. If you have any questions, reach out to me directly, comment down below if this is on YouTube. Um, and yeah, I hope you learned something today. Again, my name is Ricky PR fitness training. Main goal is to help you start working smarter and not harder in fitness. Let's get to those fitness goals. I'll see you in the next episode. Peace out.